they, they portrayed everything in there. The, the floor was the deck, the, uh, over, the ceiling was the overhead, the walls was the bulkhead, the doors were the hatches. <laughs> so uh, they, they did the best they could, but, uh, our, or like battle stations. We used to even go to battle stations even though we weren't at war. And you had to run this way on your ship. They had up port and down starboard. So when you left out of your compartment, you had to go up the correct way, or you'd run into the people coming the other way. But uh, no, they the uh, it was adequate. But uh, uh, it, it's like the boys that, that train for the army. I guess they they sure they go out and they shoot and they march. But yet when the bombs start flying, well that's different. I guess I was never there, but. And this, you didn't worry about it. You had a place on board ship. If there was bombing, uh, you hoped it didn't hit you. <laughs> uh, I was a mail, uh, mail man on board ship too. Handled all the ship's mail. It was myself and two others. And we would write, uh, they'd have payday, and we'd write more money orders. And we'd take in as much as uh, $45,000. And then we'd take it down to what we called the purser. He was the one that handled the money, and uh, then we mail off the, uh, the money orders to the pe people at home, and uh, then the purser, well, he kept the money for the government because we sold money orders, and, and uh, but we'd handled as much as forty-five thousand dollars. Victorian, your VE. See, that was in 45 also, wasn't it? Yeah. I had to be in San Francisco at the time. Yeah, I was in San Francisco on VJ Day, too. Knew then that you were, had a chance of getting home safe, so, yeah, the, uh, the VJ Day, or VE Day, by uh, VE, yeah, VE, Victor in Europe. Um, I, did, I didn't think I was going to go to the European theater anyway. I had a fellow in school, uh, he was uh, my class, he went to Europe, and he got to lay in the sand and fire the M1. <laughs> he didn't get hurt though, he got, he got back all right. Yeah, there was. Uh, there was quite a few people there on uh, Okinawa and Guam too. Uh, Guam, we, we could go in the, in the village, but you had to be careful of uh, not getting too acquainted with the civilians there. So. Uh, you stayed mostly by your ship or close to your ship. The, uh, in China, or, yeah, China, Shanghai, we tied right up to a dock and, uh, and we walked downtown in Shanghai. And of course, there was some, Shanghai was like an international city. There was British there and uh, about everybody you could name was there in Shanghai. I met a uh, fellow that was a Scottish person, though, and he had on his kilts and the whole uniform or outfit. I wanted to ask him what he had under his kilts, but <laughs> didn't, didn't do those, you know. Personality. Yeah, the, the, the officers were, were pretty good, uh, very good. Um, they were afraid of getting thrown overboard, you know, if they're kind of chickens or something. Well, they they they'd threaten to you know they throw you overboard, but no, I don't think they ever would. But no, most of them were, uh, were pretty good fit people. On board ship, you couldn't associate with them though. They had uh, what they called officers' quarters, which was up in the bow, and uh, the crew's quarters was all here down under deck. My uh, first uh, bunk was oh about six foot under under the water level, but uh, and you were. You were in uh, general quarters, you could run through uh, the officers' quarters, but other than that, uh, you could go, you were allowed there. I went to the captain's office often because uh, I delivered his mail for him. His name was Nyquist. He came from uh, Minnesota. He'd always say, come on in, son. <laughs> of course, I was a lot younger than him then. There's one officer asked me if I would uh, us go on board ship with him and, and of course the crew and he had up my rank by a notch and they were going to go around the world. 
and they gave me 90 days to make up my mind. <laughs> I, I just never went back. I don't know. It, it wasn't that bad. I, I didn't mind the service at, at all that way. The, uh, you miss your uh, friends and, and parents and relatives at home, but uh, it wasn't that bad. Okay, we had a, uh, what they call the Con Cruiser Division, uh, I think it was uh, number 241. We traveled with uh, two other cruisers, two aircraft carriers, and three destroyers. Aircraft carrier. You ever been board one? I've been around one. They got this flight deck. It's 90 feet off the water. <laughs> of course, when those planes go off, at that time they didn't catapult off. No, they weren't jet planes either. They're the old prop jobs. They'd take off and they could drop down to maybe 70 feet. And then it'll gain altitude. But uh, yeah, those aircraft carriers were big at the time. Battleships, of course, is a lot bigger than ours. They had 16-inch uh, guns on them, which were projectiles, 16 inches. Chum. Used to have the saying, join the Navy, see the world, and that's just about what I did. <laughs> uh, no, if I had to do over again, I'd, I'd do the same thing. Of course, can't now, but I mean, <laughs> can't live back. Okinawa, uh, when you come from the sea, you had a big hill or mountain. That's where those Marines got lost their lives. Oh man, they lost their lives. And, uh, even our ship couldn't shell the Japanese uh, out of where they were because they were too high up in the mountains. And uh, they had destroyers there. They got caught in a typhoon and it turned them over. That's my uh, discharge pin. They call them ruptured ducks. And that, they don't get those now. This is just World War II honorable discharge. Huh. And we had some people that uh, uh, they were quite bad drinkers and they got a discharged and we brought them home on board ship, our own sailors in the brig. And uh, they were up for discharge, bad conduct discharge. Now, that's a bad deal, but uh, they made it themselves. They used to call those guys wigwags. They'd flag back and forth to a ship so that they would so that they, uh, maintain uh, radio silence. And then they had, like you say, the wigwags. And uh, no, I didn't have any of that. Yeah, there was one man, I, I should have told you, you asked me before, uh, his name is Serene, and he came from uh, El Paso, Te no, San Antonio, Texas. He was a postmaster there, and he and I corresponded, oh, for at least 30 years after we got out, and then uh, long toward the last, he told me of his failing health, and one year I didn't hear from him, and I just took it for granted he, he died. He was a little older than I was, but uh, for about 30 years we corresponded. And I stopped in San Antonio one time to see him. And he was, you know, he's good health. Uh, that's the only one that I corresponded with. I seen fellas get, did get seasick. Every time we'd leave port, someone would get sick of seasick. Okay, yeah, of course they had people that had um, uh, high fevers, and uh, as far as I know, they, they, get, they were taken care of. Uh, they, they kept a good line of uh, medic medications, because if, if they had a real sickness there, like the flu or something, uh, they, they didn't want to get that going. Because yeah. you, you got close quarters, and 1,300 men, you're bumping sides all the time. dentistry and they even had, uh, uh, if you were wounded or uh, that way, uh, they'd fix you up. We had one fellow that uh, had appendicitis and they transferred him from our ship to another one 
and they rigged a, a line or a rope from our ship here to this one over here, and they tied him in a basket and put him on like a, a pulley, and when the ships would lock like this, he'd go way down almost to the water, and they'd go back like this, he'd go way up there, but he didn't know anything about it, because <laughs> they, they did put him out. And he went to a hospital ship, and they, uh, they operated on him. And we had another fellow got injured, they did the same thing to him. Uh, but he had a terrible head injury. It was a breech block on one of the guns broke and uh, come back and hit him in the face. But uh, they transferred him about the same way. I was out on deck one time in a storm, and I was up in this area here, and uh, a wave broke over, and I standing about knee deep in water. <laughs> I got back out of it. She came right over the bow. They, they of course had life rails uh, there, but you could easily, they were only about waist high, and uh, you could easily go over the top of them, but no, nobody jumped ship that way. They'd be their last jumping.